Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com and welcome to another episode of Watch and Learn. Today's video is a video I've contemplated doing for a long time, uh, at least a year or so, and people have asked about it, and I kind of always shied away from doing it. And then finally, I said, you know what? It's instructional. I think, I think people will benefit from it, so I'm just going to do it. And today's video is going to be about the chapter ring on the Seiko SKX 007, 009, 173, 175. And then you could probably expand this video to be any Seiko diver with a separate chapter ring. People are constantly asking me, uh, how do you align the chapter ring to the dial? And today I have an example here and I will take you through the steps, I think from start to finish on how to do it. So bear with me. Uh, it might be a while, but we'll get through it. My own wrist check. I'm doing the TGV Lion Shark, the 1521, and my own 007, the Super Oyster. Uh, this actually has a domed sapphire crystal. Uh, I think it's my first time showing it. Uh, I'm working on these. We'll hopefully have these pump, pumping out uh, you know, shortly. Anyway, let's, uh, let's head on over to the table and uh, check this one out. Okay, so for the uninitiated, you know, what the heck are we talking about here? Well, the chapter ring is the ring all the way around the dial on the outside. It's got the, ha the hash marks or tick marks that go up. Uh, and if you look at the 12, it looks decently aligned, but at the 6, you could see that the tick is just a little bit to the left of the 6 o'clock marker, and that drives some people bananas, and it must be perfect for them. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. Um, you know, I could go on and on about, you know, why this happens. Um, this is acceptable for Seiko quality. I will say that right from the start. Um, you know, due to mass production and everything else, certain corners are, are cut without a doubt, and not everything is as perfect as everybody wants it to be. Um, that's pretty much all I'm going to say on the topic. I did discuss in a bezel video how to align your bezel to zero. This one looks like it, it hits home really well. Anyway, I do want to say also a little bit of a caveat that I'm going to do most of this, if not all of it, with my gloves on. Um, simply for presentation purposes, you absolutely should not. Uh, you're going to get fibers and things stuck everywhere. Uh, you want to use finger cots, latex gloves, whatever, or just really clean hands if you want. Uh, anyway, let's let's um, discuss the tool set we're going to use. I put a couple of things in front of myself here. Case back wrench to remove the back. Uh, these are the tools that I anticipate using. I don't know if we can use all of them, but I certainly antici uh, anticipate using these. Uh, holder if I needed to hold the case to get the back off, eh, probably optional. A cover to put things under if I need to run away for two minutes that, and stop dust from coming in because I am not in a clean room. Uh, we must all understand that you know watches are assembled in a clean environment and not many of us have that capability you know in our workshops to be that clean. Tweezers, pegwood sticks, uh, I got Rodigo putty here, maybe to stick stuff, I don't know if I'm going to be using that. Uh, case press, a crystal press, and a bunch of assorted dies. You've certainly seen me use this stuff. And uh, GS Hypo Cement, it's a, it's a crafting glue, but it comes with a hypodermic needle at the tip, so it makes it really convenient to put stuff in. Uh, something else I, pro I will mention now, uh, because most likely what we'll be doing is removing the crystal from the watch, the watch will technically no longer be certified to ISO 6425 dive watch standards, so you really should have the watch rechecked uh, for water resistance when you're done. Enough of that, let's get into it. So you have a watch with a chapter ring that's not the way you like it, and I've seen them, I guess, come in two varieties. The first variety is it's just not aligned at all, and the second variety that some people have is that it actually wiggles. You turn the watch one way, it moves, turn the watch the other way, it moves, and it's a loose um, chapter ring. There's really two ways to solve that, um, and you probably don't have to go through all the steps I'm going to go through, because if you can move it, um, there's a chance, number one, that once it's aligned, you can put it in a crystal press and really press down the crystal, and you might get a little bit more interference from the gasket. 
uh, the crystal gasket and it might set it into place. If that doesn't work, you know, you're going to be going in through the back like we will, but you might not have to take out the crystal. You might be able to just sneak in a little bit of adhesive once it's in the spot that you like it. But, uh, you know, what I didn't mention was a spring bar tool. You're going to want one of those. The first thing I'm going to do just for ease of handling is to remove the strap. So once the strap is off, we are left with just the watch. So the first thing obviously that we need to do is remove the case back. And for that, I do have my case back wrench. Uh, I don't think I'm going to go through all of this to show you how to do it. You guys have seen it done. So uh, I'll see you on the other side. And now that the case back is off, you see I used the ball, another tool I've used in other videos. I guess when I showed you the tool set in the beginning, <laughs> I missed a couple of things. Uh, next thing we are going to do is we're going to remove the movement and the dial and we are going to have to release the crown and stem. So first thing you have to do is unscrew it until it pops out and then uh, I'm going to zoom in on it and I'll show you what you have to push. So now that the case back is off we need to remove the movement and dial and we have to release the crown. So I've unscrewed the crown. It just popped out. It did not pull it all the way and we're going to work on a little lever that's right around here. So I'm going to put it down and uh, uh, focus the camera on that area. So you see this little nib right here, this little lever, you're going to push down that dot and at the same time you're going to pull the crown with your finger. So I'm going to set myself up. Like I said, these gloves are probably not a great idea for this, but whatever. There we go. The crown comes right out. And then we can remove the movement. To remove the movement, it's kind of, it's pushed in there a little bit, it's not screwed in. So you just have to find a spot where you're not going to destroy anything. You'll put your tool in and you'll just kind of lift gently. And there it goes, it cracks out. Pop it out into your hand. And now this is where that little bell jar I showed you in the beginning comes in handy. I'm just going to place it in there. And there it will stay until I'm done. That way I know that nothing's going to fall on it. So here we are. Uh, the watch is watchless. <laughs> uh, so we're now looking at the crystal and the chapter ring. And remember I said before that there's a possibility that if the chapter ring is just loose, you can attack it, you can center it and glue it. Well, this is where you would do that. Uh, if you can get it to be perfect, and again, it's going to be difficult now because the dial is not there, um, you can move it a little bit and then you can apply a little bit of glue, that glue I showed you before. But more than likely, uh, you know, for perfect registration purposes, you're going to have to do it from this side. So this crystal has to come out. I I did the, I did a uh, crystal changing video a while ago, so I, I will repeat the process. So, but the crystal is pressed in from this side. So we come around over here, and we're going to push with a crystal press on this side with a die that is much smaller than the crystal. You don't want to come anywhere near the outside because that chapter ring sits here can see it sticking out and it's a piece of plastic and if you catch it with the die you will crack it very easily to it's a flimsy piece of plastic uh, something to note if I zoom in here this is the 12 o'clock portion of the case there's a nib on the chapter ring and there's a notch we go like I guess a key in a slot a slot in the case a key on the chapter ring and that kind of fits in there and that looseness is what allows the chapter ring to move around um, they're not an extremely tight tolerance fit. It's plastic. This is metal. Uh, so there is a little bit of slop in that, and that's uh, where the problem originates from. Okay, so the trick here is we're going to push on the crystal side. This one's too big. i got to get a smaller one, I think. Uh, and we're going to catch, push from the dial side. We're going to catch the crystal. So I'm going to use this cupped nylon die to sit on the bezel. And I push, the crystal will fall into the cup. So I'm going to set that up, and right before I push, uh, we'll film. Okay, so I'm all set up. I've got the small die on the top, the big die on the bottom. I'm going to just make sure I'm not catching the chapter in, which I'm not. I'm just going to give a push, and you will hear a snap that sounds bad, but it won't be. There you go. Now carefully remove the case. Woohoo! <laughs> no crystal. And then in here is the chapter ring and the crystal. You notice the crystal has a large chamfer or angle on this side. This is actually the outside. There's a very, very much smaller one on the inside. That's what we're going to use to lead it back in. Don't be confused and think that this lead-in is to press it into the case. It's not. This is the lead-in to press into the case. 
So we will put away the crystal press. We're going to need it again in a little while, but let's take a look at the chapter ring. And you can see somewhere on, I can't see it in the camera. Oh, here it is. Here's the notch. There's the notch. And now here's the case. So here's where it fits. You can see right there. You see the notch in the case I showed you before, right there. Now you're going to put this back in, but what is your reference point? Well, there is no reference point. So I guess the way I like to do it, I don't know if this is the way people do it, but I like to, believe it or not, now put the movement back in, put the back back on the watch, uh, just finger tight. Uh, that way I have a point of reference and I know I'm not putting it in crooked. So here we go. And again, me doing it on camera is not the easiest, but I go like that and kind of find where the 12 is, push it in. So what kind of holds the movement from rotating and spinning is the crown. So we're going to sneak the crown back in and it's almost, if you will, it's almost self-centering uh, because it's going to go into that, in, into the slot. So I'll push it in. Now to put it back in, it's just a gentle touch and it will lock in. And if I flip the watch, I got to be careful. I'm wearing gloves. I can't feel anything and there's no crystal. If I pull it out two clicks, I can ch change the time, pull it out one. There we go. Everything still works. Um, I'm going to, whoops, let me get it set. There we go. I'm going to push it in. I'm going to lock it down. And like I said, I have to be extremely careful because I have no feeling in my fingers from the glove. So if, you, if I catch the second hand on my glove, it, it's game over. So I'm going to place the, the back of the watch on very gently. And of course, I can't feel anything with my fingers. So I'll be right back. I'm going to spin this on and uh, I'll, I'll come right back. Okay, so the back is on, it's finger tight, and now it's time to do the reinstallation of the chapter ring and then the crystal. And I guess this is kind of the moment we've all been waiting for. Uh, kind of sad, isn't it? <laughs> but uh, let, me get my, let me get my stuff together. So I have the whole thing placed, and something you want to make sure that, you've, that you're still uh, taken care of is that there's the crystal gasket. It's a black gasket that is still in here. You want to make sure you didn't lose that. I should have mentioned that in the beginning. It usually stays in the case, uh, but just in just in case, uh, just make sure it's still there, and it is indeed still there. And I'm going to just test fit or dry fit in the chapter ring before I do anything with glue. So I find the notch, I, I see where the notch is, and I'm going to literally just drop it in. And it actually just dropped into place really nicely. Um, there we go. And let's see if we can get it to be perfect. And it looks like it's still a little bit to the left. So what do you do? You know, I'm stuck with that notch, that, excuse me, crappy tab and notch. So, well, what do you think you got to do? That notch is there for manufacturability. We are going to just take that notch off. So I'm going to remove the chapter ring to get the notch off. Let me hold this back. Here it is. And you can use anything. Use a pocket knife. You can use a nail file. Whatever you want. It is a tiny piece of plastic that is inconsequential. So I'm going to file it off and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. I filed off the notch on the bottom. I don't have to really show you where I got rid of it, but it's gone. It's smooth all around. Uh, and so now we want to lay it in. And I know I can get it perfect now because the notch is gone. I'm not worried about that. I have my glue handy. This is that GS Hypo Cement I showed you. Uh, it's got this really cool syringe tip, as you can see. I just pulled the cap off and cleaned it up a bit because it was a little sloppy from the last time I used it. Uh, but really all we're going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of the glue. I'm going to dab it on the chapter ring in a couple of places. Uh, you don't need a lot. You just need a little bit just to, just to really stake it in place. Uh, and then w this glue is good because, number one, it's got the, the needle at the end for a fine application. But more importantly, it cleans up with alcohol. If you make a mistake, it's not permanent. You know, you use five-minute epoxy or something, and, you know, you're going to throw the whole thing away if it's not right. So I'm just going to take a couple of dabs, and like I said, I'm trying to do it on camera and do it with my eyes at the same time. So just little dabs. Little dab, little dab, little dab, and then a little bit on the bottom. So now that I've got the glue on the chapter ring, I'm, I guess I went, I forwent the glove on my left hand. I gave, I, I had to give up. I just couldn't get it in uh, with my glove, but I'm going to try to center as best as I can. 
down here as well. And again, the good thing about this cement is that it takes a while to dry. There we go. And you just gotta, it's gonna hang up a little bit. It might, sorry about that. I know I occluded your view for a second. And oh, I was using a little piece of Rotico here again. And I'm just gonna push down. And I do see a little bit of glue on the dial. That's okay, it cleans up. Uh, and then I'm just gonna use the pegwood to push down and make sure it looks good everywhere and that six o'clock is looking yeah it looks pretty good like again things on camera are not simple but there we go I think that's pretty much perfect I do see a little bit of glue sneaking out over here uh, but I will get this cleaned up like I said, a little bit of rubbing alcohol on a q-tip and the whole thing will clean up but what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to let it sit and cure, and then we'll come back and uh, we'll press the crystal on. Okay, so after the glue has now had some time to dry, uh, about 30 minutes or so, we know it's not going to move. I can look at that alignment on the 12. I'll flip it around. And the 6 looks pretty good. It might be able to be scooched a little bit more, but, I mean, that's pretty darn close. Uh, everything else still looks good. The markers look aligned. So the next step is to go back to the crystal press and uh, pop in the crystal. So to put the crystal on is indeed the reverse of what we did to take it off. Um, you would want to hit this with a lint-free cloth or something uh, before you put it on and maybe hit it with some compressed air just to make sure all the dust is off of it. Uh, but you're going to put it in. Remember that big lead-in goes to the outside. So Again, not easy to do with through the camera, but I'm going to get it set up and then we'll we'll uh, film the installation. I've got both dies positioned. The crystal is kind of straight, or as straight as I can get it, and it's just going to be a push to get it in. There it goes. It went in, and I'll I'll reset in a second. Let me get this thing out of here. And there you go. Uh, you can see the 12 is looking good. The six is looking the same it did before. Definitely much better than the before shot. Um, like I said, I probably could have, you know, you look at it afterwards and now I look at it with my eyes. Uh, you probably could have finagled it just a little bit more, but all the other markers, everybody lines up nicely. Um, and that's it. There you go. I, so that's how you would line up the chapter ring on a 007, a 009, uh, any of those watches. Obviously, you have, to, you have to put the strap back on. But I think that's it. You're pretty much set. Uh, you know, oh, I never tightened the back. Remember that. We did it before finger tight. Uh, so you need to <laughs> tighten up the back. And if you want to get the watch water resistance checked, uh, if you are going to go into the water uh, and you're going to use it as a dive watch, I highly recommend that. Anyway, uh, this has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com showing you how to align the chapter ring on the SKX 007 009 divers. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not done so yet. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down below and I'll be sure to address them as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.